Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. Looking forward to a wonderful time. Today, however, is a special day, especially for Ruth. Ruth, this is the 10-year anniversary Amazing. of the, uh, well, the complete reformatting yes. of Spectrum. Yes. And 10 years ago, Ruth and Pastor Ray, my mm -hmm. dad, uh, began the program as a 30-minute daily show. Now, I wasn't yes. on the program back in those days. Right. Um, I think we might even have a picture or two that they'll they'll share today. The set looked a lot different, didn't it? We have gone through many changes with the set since I began. But I remember those days with your dad, and uh -huh. he was my biggest cheerleader, um, would tell me, you can do this, you, you can do this. You and didn't so, really want to do it, did you? No. It was kind of a, <laughs> one of those kicking and screaming kind of things, but you know, you're like resisting, but it's happening anyway. And so, but I had the privilege, little did I know we were gonna have him for another year. And I had the privilege of being with him every day that we shot Spectrum. And back then they were fresh shows, four days a week. Right. We were in studio. Well, um, we're not in studio as many days a week now. Right, but we were in studio. With, we had three guests every week. And then on Thursdays, we had that cooking segment. That's that right. he was like, we're going to have a cooking segment. And, and, and I was like, no, but <laughs> it happened and we did it. And yeah, People everything just took off after segment. that. So happy anniversary. Thank you. To Ruth today. Those are great memories. Because uh, 10 years is a long time to be hosting a show and you've done a great job. Thank you. Do you have any special memory that you want to share with us today? Oh, you know, something funny. The very first day... Right. And if I can find that picture, you'll see it. But I was not feeling my best that first day of taping. Uh -huh. And so later on, you see, you think you look great. Well, I didn't. I look like I didn't feel good that day. And my, my microphone, we tried to hide the cords. And mine was like all over the side of my dress, hanging off. And <laughs> I think Pastor Ray was in a sling because he had had surgery. He had. He'd had a shoulder surgery. A rotator cuff surgery. And it's just funny. But one of the things that he really enjoyed was talking to so many people and getting to know them. And he would tell me that was probably his most favorite part of Spectrum was getting yeah. to talk to people. We still miss him. And of course, we have right as we walk into the studio, there's a big portrait of him. So it reminds <laughs> us of him all the time. So happy anniversary, Thank Spectrum. You. Happy anniversary, Ruth. Well, you came right along after that. because well, we, about a year later. Uh -huh. yeah. About a year later. I stepped in to help out as we yeah. uh, as we made some changes as he got sick and then he passed. Mm -hmm. Well, today we go to the news. There's some interesting things that okay. are in the news today. And one of them um, has to do, I thought this was really interesting. I came across this a few days ago. It has to do with trends of people moving state to state. Yes. We are finding that the uh, what they call the red states are increasing and the blue states are losing population. The two states that are really struggling the most um, are places like New York, Illinois, are really um, losing folks. And the two that have really been solidly gaining are mm -hmm. Texas and Florida. Mm -hmm. They're number one and number two. Now, the rest of the states kind of fall into the pile behind that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the migration is from the colder areas to the south and the southwest. Right. And so, like you mentioned, we have Texas is number one on the list because there is a list. And then we have Florida. And coming in third and fourth are the Carolinas, North mm -hmm. and South Carolina. New Mexico, I believe, is dropped. So you, Colorado's like number 11, Utah is 12. And I believe New Mexico is 19, 19 on the list. And they, I did think they did a little bit of, this was by the folks at U-Haul. Mm -hmm. and, and they did a little bit of comparison um, like year to year. Uh, New Mexico last year, I think, was 10th, but we dropped down to 19th. And, and I think it's interesting, hmm. too, because we, of all of our neighboring states, are the lowest um, destination. So, of course, Texas on one side of us is number one, and you've got Colorado that is, is higher than we are. Arizona, I think, is in the top 10. I couldn't remember if it was 7th or 9th. And, Arizona 7th. 7th, and then yes. Utah uh, is also uh, above us at 12. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, it, 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 and that's been a struggle. New Mexico has not been growing very fast. Mm -hmm. Really, for the last 13 years, we, we've been growing, but been pretty slow going. Surprising to me was number five, which is Virginia. Hmm. People moving lot, to Virginia. A lot of government jobs, though, 
You know, mm -hmm. if you if you work in Washington D.C., you know, a I lot of those so, people yes. would maybe live in, the, yeah. in Virginia. And of course, they've been they've been in the news a lot with all their problems with their schools um, mm -hmm. and all the fights going on in Loudoun County and all of those things. So I thought that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it matters. It matters where people live because yes. they, they typically go where there's jobs and they yes. typically go where there's more opportunity. And a lot of the opportunity really is based on freedom. And if you think about some of those states that are much more business friendly, they really are, um, they're, they're more Republican states. You think of Texas and Florida definitely and, and the Carolinas as well. Those are states that have been trending more in the direction of, of, of Republican leadership. So I wonder what that says for mm. us long term, because our state has really trended the opposite direction. We've been oh, moving yeah. uh, Democratic now for probably about at least 12 to 15 years. Deep blue. And as that's happening, it seems like our growth is slowing. Mm. So, you know, there, there probably is some correlation because it's happening all across the country. Also, we have, talking about New Mexico, a decline mm. in enrollment in public schools. That is interesting, isn't yeah. it? Um, our public schools have really seen a shift, especially if you think back since the time of COVID. Now, COVID was a kind of a, an earth-shattering event. APS, of course, Albuquerque Public Schools, largest of all of our um, school districts in, in the entire state. And so that's one that we kind of watch a little bit. Mm -hmm. As they came into COVID, um, the total number of students that were enrolled in APS, um, and maybe you have that number right in front of you. 89,553 students, I believe is what the article says. That was from 2019 to 2020. Mm -hmm. All right, so then as we get to the more current year, it's dropped all the way to 82,329. So you, you see that there's been a, a pretty significant drop. They say over the last 10 years, there's been a drop in enrollment at Albuquerque Public Schools. About how many? 11,000. That's a lot. That's a lot. It is a lot. Where are they going? So that's what my next thing would be, maybe homeschool. I think we talked about that earlier. Maybe sure. children, maybe parents, especially in COVID, yeah. um, quit their jobs, rearrange their budget, and they're staying home with their children. Sure. There could that be some to, to private schools. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think, and, and charter schools, because mm -hmm. the charter schools are, <clears throat> well, they're, they're really public schools as well, but they're not necessarily like APS. They're kind of their own, their own uh, school district. So there, you know, there is some school choice issues out there. But here's something that's not been talked about a lot, but I have seen this in other venues. There was a real drop in the birth rate back during the Great Recession, 2008. Well, if you, you know, start doing the math. Where do we find ourselves? We're approximately 15 years later, 14 to 15 years later. We're now being told that high school enrollment should really start dropping off next year. And about four years from now, maybe five years from now, there is a real concern that college enrollment across the country is going to significantly decline because a lot of these um, millennials, okay, which are now aging out of the college realm, those folks are not going to be replaced because mm -hmm. there was a drop in the birth rate. And when that happens, uh, they're really concerned that a lot of our smaller colleges and universities may cease to exist. Well, that, may, that would make sense, though. It yeah. would. And mm -hmm. that might be what's affecting some of the things that are happening with our, our public school enrollments as well. And I think what has affected um, people keeping their children at home is also the lack of interaction with parents or not allowing parents to have that transparency with their child, even mm -hmm. when they're at school. Right. And so that's a big, that's a big factor. It would be for People me if like I had that. a, if I had a young child, mm -hmm. when I remember when our children were in school, they couldn't even give them a Tylenol without calling mm -hmm. and things that, without calling to get approval from the parent and things have changed yeah, drastically in, in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. Here's what it has to do with healthcare that is, is interesting. There is a major strike that is taking place because of Negotiations have broken down in New York City area, and they are expecting about 7,000 nurses to be on the picket line, which could Oof. really be impacting yeah, yeah. several of the different hospitals throughout the region. Uh, and as that is happening, there is a real concern of how that is going to uh, impact healthcare in general. 
you know, we, we depend on our healthcare workers so much oh, yeah. and uh, they have just not been able to come to terms. I think it's impacting four or five of the major hospitals in that area. Well, that's a high pressure job anyway. You're, you're talking about somebody who is critically ill mm -hmm. and the family and the patient, they're in, a, in distress. And then you have shortages of, of care the workers, mm -hmm. nurses, and it's a very high, I would think, very demanding, very demanding stressful job. job. Right. Well, hopefully that'll play out quickly and they'll be able to resolve it. Well, it gives you kind of an update on some of the things that are in the news. Got a great guest coming up. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. As we've launched into a brand new year, 2023, I want to uh, just encourage you to be faithful in your giving in this new year. You know, as we end the year, we start a year, we all are experiencing the same thing. Everybody is getting those, those Christmas bills, aren't you? <laughs> and uh, some, some of the utility bills, there's been concerns, um, especially with natural gas, maybe that being up a little bit as well. So, you know, I understand that we've all have our pressures, but I would certainly encourage you to be faithful in your giving to Alpha Omega Broadcasting because we really are dependent on your support to make things happen and to be able to continue being the uh, source of encouragement, both for family entertainment and inspirational programming that you have learned to depend on us to be over the last, believe this or not, 35 years. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing. People can really get involved and, and make a difference, and I, I encourage you to do that. Yes, of course, you can always call into the station at 505-884-8355, extension 101, to speak to someone live. Or you can, if you have that donation ready, you can send it into Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, at 7109. Or simply visit us online at kazq32.org to send in your donation. Again, we have different levels of participation, of support with our family safe haven level of $32 a month. And we also have our president partner level, which is 50, 75, or 100, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Remember, your deductions are tax deductible. We will have those receipts out to you in the mail. If something has changed and you've moved and we need to update those records for you to receive that, please call in and let us know so that it gets, we send it to the right location. I really encourage you. Get involved with that recurring donation. Those can happen on a credit or debit card. And if you'll just tell us, we'll make sure to run those on a monthly basis. Yeah, that continuing support really is what helps us. And we just say, thank you, do your best. I know God will bless us as we work together. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. Privilege today to have with us Sonia Warwick. Sonia is with Roadrunner Food Bank. Probably many of you have heard of Roadrunner Food Bank. Sonia, glad to have you back. Oh my goodness, we're honored to be here and thanks so much for inviting us back on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's always good to start off by just uh, refreshing people's memory. Tell us a little bit about what Roadrunner Food Bank is. I know that a food bank is different than a food pantry, but I only know that because I've talked to you before. <laughs> Tell us the difference. What is a food bank? Yes. Yeah, so in essence, as our name implies, we literally take in food and we bank it for food pantry-like partners. Um, so throughout um, our relationships with Feeding America and grocery store partners and other food industry um, companies, we bring in food to the food bank, and then that benefits our network of hundreds of partners located all across the state of New Mexico, and in addition, four regional food banks that service that number of counties as well. So you service other food banks? Are you like the largest food bank we in the are, state? We are. We are. So our facility is roughly 130,000 square feet, the warehouse itself. That's big. It's That's big, huge. and we are, think of us like a distribution center. It's gotcha. the size of a Costco or a Sam's Club for those who are familiar with that size of uh, facility. And, you know, like I said before, we're bringing in all kinds of food from all across the country, and then it is going out to our food pantry partners or other similar organizations downstream of us for okay. the benefit of people who are in need. Well, we're launching into a brand new year, and any time that we get into a new year, I think we begin to you know, automatically try to reset ourselves yeah. a little bit. What can I do different? How can I volunteer? 
what what's needed. So yes. tell us about the new year needs because we're kind of branching into the early part of a brand new opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, the uh, early parts of the year in terms of volunteer needs are a little lean for us. So okay. we definitely could use the volunteer support um, in the first quarter of the year. Uh, if you have time and want to come and volunteer two or three hours at our Albuquerque facility, we'd love to have you. You do everything from um, boxing food to sorting produce to repacking bulk items into family size servings and more. Okay, so when you get items from whoever it's donating it mm -hmm. to, whether it's, you know, I, and I'm sure there's a wide variety, some of those things then come in in large packages or do they come in, they in do. bulk or what, what does that mean? Exactly. It's bigger bulk than you'll ever see at a grocery store. So, for example, we have relationships with um, uh, food companies that give us like these 2,000 pound totes of cereal, for example, and you know it's how do you <laughs> how do you deal with two thousand? I mean, I just think yesterday I was I was at the grocery store and bought a box, right? You know, so I, I don't know, what, sixteen ounces or something. I mean, how do you deal with two thousand pounds of cereal? Exactly. So, and that's where helping hands of volunteers come into play. So we have a clean room where you wear a lovely lab coat and a hairnet, and then we have those volunteers basically weigh the cereal to a set account, a set number, if you will. They seal it and they label it. It. And so it's really before it's ever made it to the packaging that you see at the grocery store level. So that's just one item that we need help with um, wow. in our warehouse. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's an interesting thought. Exactly. Isn't it? <laughs> you would have never. You get to kind of be on the assembly line, so to speak. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. And uh, so so that's just one of the things that you do. Yeah. Now let's say that there's someone tied with an organization, a church. And you're thinking, you know, we would like to have a food distribution. Yes. Is this a good time of year? I mean, it's cold. I mean, I'm, I'm th I don't know. I mean, is there a better time of year to have one than, than others? Yeah, what I would tell people is, you know, if you're looking to introduce that as part of your faith ministry, you know, please contact us. We'll want to have a conversation with you. There is some set criteria that we're looking for oh, for okay. partners. Uh, you know, we are looking for people who want to distribute um, on a regular basis. To so it's not like a one-time thing. No, it's not a one-time thing. We want to establish that consistency for people who are in a community so that they know that that service is there throughout the rest of the year. So let's talk about that, build on that just a minute. D does that mean that you have to do it every week or can it be twice a month or does it exactly. can be monthly? It can be monthly. Quarterly. It can be, like, yeah, and we would probably at least encourage you to do monthly, but we do have some sites who distribute weekly. We have some sites who distribute more than, okay. more than once a week. We have some that do once a month. We have others that do twice a month. It's kind of all across the board and we are looking for partners in some of our rural communities in particular where we need to beef up those relationships with new partners and existing partners there. You know, it's it's always a work in progress, isn't it, Sonia? Absolutely. You're, you never really completely get there. No. I, I think we all wish, you know, if, if I just... If I could just do one more check mark, I'll be there. <laughs> but it usually doesn't work that way. Now, you have, I understand, something uh, that we've never talked about, to my knowledge. Okay. It's kind of a, a fundraiser uh -huh. that yes. you do, and it has to do with soup. And we're talking like, you know, different flavors of soup, <laughs> exactly. like vegetable soup or chicken <laughs> soup or whatever. And you call it a soup er. Bowl, bowl, right? Yeah. Everybody gets their soup in a bowl. Hey, tell us about <laughs> it. What's that all about? Of course. So this event we've been hosting, oh, probably since the mid to late 90s. And we host it inside our warehouse, of course, with, you know, all, everything that has happened the past two years. We've not been able to host in-person events. but in, Maybe in that's a nutshell, why we've not talked about it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but in a nutshell, it's a soup and dessert sampling event that's held right in our warehouse right Yum. here in Albuquerque. And it's a fundraising event, you know, so we invite restaurants to come and serve um, their favorite recipe, their soup recipe or their favorite dessert recipe. We have some bringing multiple soups. Wow. We have some bringing soup and dessert. And I am telling you, these are so at least what I've seen some of the restaurants submit already is um, things that they're going to bring are going to be very delicious. Are you still taking volunteer groups to participate? Or are you pretty yeah, much full we're up we're pretty much year? full, at least on our Super Bowl volunteer placements. But we do have some opening for any restaurant out there. Oh, that's what I meant. Who yeah. Would like to, yeah, for any restaurant who would like to um, sign up, we've got some slots still available. And, of course, you know, people from the community can definitely buy tickets. Um, What's a ticket cost to a belly? Yeah, so for this, it's $50 for 
for basically 13 years and old, years old and up, excuse me. Sure. And then if you can bring children to this is a family friendly event and our children's tickets from ages five to 12 are $15 a piece. Where is it located? Right at our warehouse, which is just around the corner from this studio at uh, basically uh, Office and Singer, major cross streets, Jefferson and I-25. I kind of know where Office and Singer are located, having uh, cruised around the neighborhood before. <laughs> so, all right. So that that's great. Well, this event for your uh, soup and desserts, what date does it come? Yeah, it's going to be held on Saturday, February 4th, and it's a great opportunity to have it right in the middle of the day. So public hours of the event are from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, you know, the, our front doors will open at 10, so if you're not sure you want to buy tickets early, you can come that day and purchase tickets in person. Day of. Yeah, but we are selling tickets now, so you can visit our website at rrfb.org, and you'll see a story up there that will take you to the details on how to buy a ticket online. Okay, so don't forget about that. That's going to be in the month of February, or opening Saturday, I believe, isn't it? Saturday, Saturday February the 4th. 4th, yes. So that's going to be a special date. It's middle of the day. You said it middle starts around day, 11? 11 o'clock. Okay, mm -hmm. goes till 2, 3, 2, two, two o'clock. All right. Mm -hmm. That's about right for lunch, right? You know, a, oh. a lunchy kind of event. And I can't believe how full you get on these wonderful samples of soup. I have been to some events like that and it is surprising yeah. it is surprising <laughs> how you you leave there and you're like wow i didn't expect to to feel so uh, full after <laughs> all of that tasting yes. yeah it's, it's great <laughs> uh how does this specific event help you because you know it, it sounds fun, but I'm sure there's a purpose to it. There is. Of course, like with any event that nonprofits hold, you know, this is a way that we raise money in times of year that are a little leaner for us. So obviously, as we start the new year, um, we do see, you know, donations that are down compared to the holiday months. And it's a gotcha. great way also to remind the community that this is a different way that you can get involved and uh, help the food bank, too. And come and enjoy some wonderful entertainment, some wonderful soup, some wonderful dessert from... Uh, oh, there's entertainment. You didn't there mention is. that before. What is that? Include? Yeah. So, um, of course, we have a silent auction so people can, you know, bid on auction items. But we also have a band called the Peacemakers who's been donating their services to this event for years. And they play wonderful music. And um, it just makes kind of a nice, friendly, fun event that people can meander around in our warehouse and uh, enjoy soup and dessert to their hearts. And I would imagine that it also gives them a better you know, picture of who you are and what you do. Absolutely. If you're able to actually be on the ground at, the, uh, you know, at, at Roadrunner and to see what they're doing as a food bank. Do you, do you give many tours or things like that? Or just we let do. people look yeah, around? Yeah, of course. You know, we'll have staff on site to you know, right. answer questions for any guest who has any specifics that they want to know and um, if they want a more depth in-depth kind of tour for us we can arrange that with them at any okay. time okay so remember this special soup and dessert event that it's being called the soup er bowl you know, you're <laughs> going to get your own soup in a bowl that day and it'll be fun plus desserts hey february the 4th 11 a.m to 2 p.m and that'll be at Roadrunner Food Bank. If people want to volunteer, what's the best way they can contact yeah, you? Yeah, if they want to volunteer to help in our warehouse, um, please get a hold of our volunteer team. Uh, that information is also on our website, or you can email volunteer at rrfb.org. All right. Well, there's some great information for you today. <laughs> Sonia Warwick with the Roadrunner Food Bank. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you for having us. going to go to the book of Mark and we're going to talk for a few moments about being free from bondage. Ruth, there is an account of Jesus and his disciples crossing the lake to the other side of the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. And uh, we pick up the read in Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 3. Why don't we start there to set the scene and we're going to see some signs of bondage. Okay, so Mark 5, 1 through 3. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. All right, now this is a parallel passage. You can also look in the book of Luke, chapter 8, and it talks about this same account. In fact, in one of the accounts, it talks about the fact that there were two men who mm -hmm. came out of the tombs. But here's some things to, to look for when you see bondage, and it parallels back to this passage. Number one, 
Understand that bondage often has been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. People usually don't get into bondage in a day, and they don't usually get free from bondage in a day, mm -hmm. although they can. You, mm -hmm. can. you can get into bondage quickly, and you can get out uh, right. quickly by the miraculous hand of God, but usually That's people about. progress. And it says of this man that he had been battling this demon possession for a long time. Okay, You can see that in Luke chapter 8, verse 27. A second item that points to bondage is the fact that the possession drove the person wild. And I, I think about this when I think about a lot of the bondage that people are facing in our country right now, especially as they find themselves addicted to drugs and to other types of behaviors. They're wild. They're often crazed. And we hear about it. We hear about it in the news. You see it. This man was wild. He, scripture says he lived like an animal. Another example, Ruth, is the fact that the man lived with the decaying and the dead. He lived yes. in the areas of, of the tombs. tombs. And you never, as you look at somebody who's in bondage, you also always find that there's things that are dirty. There's often, sadly to say, urine and feces and all sorts of disgusting things that are there because of the bondage that has captivated them. He was tormented. He was self-destructive. He was cutting himself with stones. Mm -hmm. Haven't you heard of young people? who are struggling with bondages and they start cutting themselves. Mm -hmm. you, do you see how yes. these things are repeating? And he had an uncontrollable behavior. There is another example. Yeah. He, he wasn't something that could be controlled. He broke chains. He was out of control. If you, if you utilize the scriptural principles that describe somebody who's in bondage to the things that are going on in our world today, you will see that there is a lot of satanic bondage yes. that is keeping people bound up yes. and destroyed. And you have to be alert and on guard, because the Bible says your enemy, the devil, prowls, prowl, prowls around like a roaring, a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's happening today. We as saints of God, we as believers in Jesus Christ, have been equipped. And we have the Lord, our Lord and Savior living inside of us. The Bible says greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. And those are tools that we have that we don't use off. We don't use them enough. That's right. And they are very real. So we need to suit up, we need to armor up, and we need to stay alert. I hope you've had a wonderful day, and I hope this time has been encouraging to you. God bless you. See you next time.